Hey everybody, welcome back to Beginner's Mind Art Mind. I'm Linda and I have another jam-packed video for you this week. We're going to talk about stay wet palettes, how to maintain them, how to set up a portable one for plein air painting, also how I keep my trance and airtight palette free from mold and mildew. My husband and I go down to the Connecticut River to do some painting and we take you along with us. So grab a cup of coffee or tea, sit back and enjoy the video. The current state of my Stay Wet palette. This is their, the Masterson's Stay Wet Handy palette. And mine is looking pretty gnarly. It's even got some rips in the paper from where I scraped it with palette knife. I've been using this sheet for quite a while. So I thought I would show you how I freshen up my Stay Wet palette. So I've had a fresh sheet of their Stay Wet palette paper soaking in this sink in, in as hot a water as I could get from my faucet for about 15 minutes. And then this I will rinse out. And then I will rinse out my sponge. What I used to do with my sponge to keep my paints from going bad or getting moldy, especially the M. Graham gouache that has the honey in it, was spray my sponge and paper with the hydrogen peroxide. But I found that the hydrogen peroxide was eating through my sponges and weakening the paper really fast. So now what I do is I take and sprinkle, I need to get this a little wetter. I squeezed this out a little too much. Just lightly squeeze it. And I was doing this, I did do this with distilled water and experimented both ways, but I found that um, with the vinegar, I don't need to use the distilled water. So then I squeeze the vinegar in there and still leave, I don't squeeze it tight. I still leave plenty of vinegar in there. And then in this bottle, I have a mixture of distilled water and the white vinegar. And this is what I spray my palette with in between painting sessions. This bottle's actually already half full, so I'm just adding some vinegar and top it off with some distilled water. And as long as I do that, I haven't had any problems with my paints molding or going bad on my Stay Wet Handy palette. Sorry, I keep bumping the camera. I'm trying to work over the boom that's holding the camera. Okay, so put your sponge back in, put the textured side down and the flat side up, and then take your paper And put your paper in I rub it to even out the moisture and if I feel like it's a little too wet I can dab it but I want to leave a bit of moist I want to leave enough moisture in there to keep everything nice and fresh but not so much moisture that my paints start to spread out and that's how I refresh it now it's ready to load up with uh, my gouache. I love this palette. It works really, really well for me. I do have their larger size, two of their larger size palettes that I use for acrylics, but for gouache, I really like the smaller size. As a matter of fact, I just set up a homemade version for my A La Prima Pashad box. This is my Transon gouache palette which I absolutely love for plein air painting. Airtight, as long as this is on, watertight. I'm getting ready to load that up. So I carry my paints in this, and this fits down in the bottom section of my Pashad box. And I took a graph tint pencil case, 
and put one of the Stay Wet Palette sponges in the bottom and cut a sheet of the Stay Wet Palette paper to fit in there. And seal that up. There was a hole in the back, so I covered that with duct tape. And then what I do is I open up that so I have access to my tools. I put that like that. I open this up so I have access to my paints. I can either leave it in there or put it up on there. That's my setup. Works really good. I love the Masterson Stay Wet Palette setup, especially for making your own. There's actually a little magnet on the side here that's meant to hold this little door up, but it works perfectly for holding my metal palette on there. So this is where I keep the paints. And then when I'm mixing the colors, I mix them on here. And because it's a Stay Wet palette, I can use my mixes for longer. And there it is. Hubby and I came down to the Connecticut River in Brattleboro to do some painting. I should have taken a picture for when I first started and along the way. couple of Holbein colors, my homemade Stay Wet palette, my Alla Prima Pashad box. It's an absolutely beautiful day for painting down here. So many scenes to paint. I could spend weeks down here. Here comes Hubby. He already finished his first painting. He's way faster than I am. He's got watercolor. Where's your painting? There's his first watercolor of this scene. He's good. He knows how to stay loose. Loosey goosey. What's that? Loose like a goose. Okay, got to get back to it. Oh, this is using those sun clips for the Alla Prima Pashad with the panel for shade. I'd be lost without it today because the direction that I'm painting in is right into the sun and it's it would be blinding. That's that's a good example of how well this shades your panel. Is that your second or your third? Second. Going slow today. What's that? Going slow. Going slow? I'm still on my tiny, tiny first. I'm a hokey pokey one painter. That's what my palette looks like. Okay, I know I said it before, but I think I'm definitely going to call this done now. Really had fun doing it. Simplified that scene over there and those reeds. Beautiful day down at the river. I'm trying to 
trying to decide if I'm going to do another painting. Boy, it's beautiful out. So beautiful. Okay, I was so inspired by my hubby's loose painting that my last one I did really loose. Really enjoyed it. Did it way faster than this one and now it helps me to see that this one is way too tight. Way too picky and tight. I really love that one. Super loose. With those reeds over there. Yep, very fun. My husband's work inspires me to stay loose. Okay, what a fun way to spend the uh, morning down here painting. You all done painting, Bubba? All done. All done. Oh, that was fun. Glad I brought my sun clips for the top of the shot box. It worked really well. Okay, so we're getting ready to pack up. Those are the two I did today, and those are the two of the crocuses that I did on Easter where I got rained out. This one actually got rained on so bad I never finished it. So I'm getting my camera rig set up to do some filming in the studio and Posey is here panting like crazy. And I have noticed in a couple of my videos that um, when she is panting in the background, it sounds like I'm breathing really heavy. Popo. Are you gonna pant through this whole video? Hi Posey, hi Posey. Anyways, so if you hear her panting in the background, it is not me breathing heavy. It's my dog. <laughs> so I this these were the paintings that I, um, the plein air paintings that I did the other day. I did these on Easter Sunday, and um, these were done out in the front yard of our crocuses. And if you saw that video, you saw that it started to rain. And this was getting, this one was getting so wet and so rained on that I didn't finish it. And this one was just um, rained on a little bit because I covered it with a towel. And then we went down to the Connecticut River and uh, painted. I painted those two. So then I came home and I had left my palette and my homemade Stay Wet palette in, the, uh, in my Peshad box. So what I do usually, is either the you know when I get back or within a few days and I clean them off I rinse off the lid if it needs if it has an accumulation of paint and if I need to I take a little container of water and clean off the edges of my palette here just to keep things clean And then I spray the paints with water. And it's that same distilled water vinegar mix that I showed when I set up this Stay Wet palette. So I spritz those off real good, which I've already done. And you don't want to overdo it because you don't want your paints to bleed into each other. I'm just going to mix things up, get the water and 
vinegar mixed in there so I don't end up with mold issues because again this is M gram paint and it's with a, there's a couple of Holbein in here actually but the M gram paint with the um, honey is prone to molding and the vinegar if you think about it the vinegar it's like when you pickle things in vinegar they don't mold they don't go bad they don't grow bacteria and I have tried clove oil which burned a hole I put clove oil on a cotton ball and it burned a hole in my palate in, in the plastic in my palate and I tried alcohol which is actually really not good to be spraying alcohol and breathing it in um, I can talk about that in another video that's part of why I stopped painting on silk with alcohol based dyes um, because it's really not good for your health and some people use hydrogen peroxide watered down I tried that it didn't work for me I still got mold on my paints the only thing that worked for me was using distilled water and vinegar. And the mixing really helps because it, it gets the, not only gets the um, water vinegar mixture down into your paint, but it prevents it from sitting on top and leaking, if you tip it, leaking from one section to another. These Holbein paints are so much thicker than the M. Graham. They're the ones that I worry about more drying out in my palette than the M. Graham. This is a Holbein, Holbein, Holbein. And I think that one's a Holbein. All right, that's M. Graham. You can just see how soupy, soupy those are. Okay, that's all rinsed off. I'll pop that back on and I never do this I never add this much water and mix it in as I did right before I'm gonna go I always try to let this sit overnight to let the paint settle so I will keep this flat um, so that I don't have any spillage from one area to the next or you know that it just doesn't slop around and make a mess so I will keep that flat for now whoops and then I take out my little palette, my homemade Stay Wet palette. And I also spray that down with the vinegar water mixture. What I do is, um, this was the painting session when I did the crocuses. And then I washed the paper off when I came in and when I was done. And this is my landscape um, painting. So, and I also washed this paper, this side of the paper off. So you can get a lot more uses out of your paper if you keep it rinsed like that. And I make sure that my sponge is nice and wet. And I did spray this down. It looks like there's plenty of moisture in there. And it's not getting mildewy or moldy at all because of the vinegar. So that's all set. So I can close that back up. And these two items, this is what I made my palette out of a uh, Derwent pencil box. So those two items are ready to go back down with my Peshad box. Then I also do the same routine with this palette, which isn't loaded right now. I may actually be loading this today because I might do a, um, a painting with the Turner acryl gouache which is what I would use this palette for. Just make sure my the back of the paper is wet, my sponge is damp, the edges of the sponge dry off much faster than the middle. I'll let that sit and settle for a while before I load my paints in.
and that's ready to go. Okay. And I forget if I showed this in my plein air video or not, because I actually haven't edited that yet. But these are my favorite four paintings in this sketchbook. And look what I did. I painted them upside down. The sketchbook goes this way. And I painted these upside down. Oh well, such is life. I just gotta remember now to flip it over when I do the next page in here to keep it keep it going in the right direction. I guess I could just switch over, but that would get confused. Or is there a front and a back? Yeah, there is, so I'm gonna flip it over. Okay, so now my palettes are refreshed. Let's see, today I'm going to be filming a different video because I'm going to be doing some sketchbook flip-throughs. I'm not sure how many I will actually get. Those, these two aren't even full. I'm not sure how many I will actually get and because these videos aren't always uploaded in chronological order, this will probably end up being in a different video. If these do end up being in different videos, I will put a link in the show notes below to the flip throughs so you can easily access them. I've gotten behind in my flip throughs, so I have a bunch of journals. Oh, look at that. There was one in here that I did upside down too. Where did it go? <laughs> Those two were done upside down. That's funny, guess it happens. And then this one is a real mix of things. Drawings. So those are some plein air paintings actually down at our pond. So, okay. So if these end up in a separate video, because I'm going to film this today, I'll put the link in the um, show notes below and you can go find those. So I hope you have found the information on cleaning out, on loading refreshing and keeping your stay wet palette clean and functioning well. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make your own homemade stay wet palette out of a pencil tin or any anything that you find and refreshing your airtight transcend palette. And I will put links to this and this and whatever else I end up showing in this video in the show notes below so that you can easily access them. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next video. Mm -hmm.